Hello, hello, hello. It is Monday. And I wish I had some jingle bells that I could ring here for you because only 33 more days until Christmas. Me, of, about, uh, of anybody, me, I can't believe I'm actually, think I'm getting into the holiday spirit. This morning, I was told, I think you're in the holiday spirit and what's gotten into you? And I think it's just the, the act of making is really getting me going. On over the weekend, I finished up the other stocking that matches and it, it, both of them are cute as a button. And these are the very, very basic um, stockings that you could do. And I suggest if you haven't already, watch that one because if you're looking for a quick, quick project uh, to give somebody, then hey, I suggest making some Christmas stockings. Get other people in the mood. Give it to them early. Say, hey, the holidays are coming. And you know what else is coming? Well, let's start the show. Welcome to The Quilt Stream. My name is Chip Connor. I am your host and today is Monday, November 22nd. The days just keep on passing by. So I have been on the make and over the weekend I was planning and plotting and I thought about it. I have a gift to give everyone. I thought, what could I possibly give everybody? And it, as, I was, uh, as I was thinking about it and I was doing some sewing, I thought, I'm going to give everybody this gift, the gift of coloring outside the lines. You know how we all get caught up and um, we all just think, oh gosh, you know, the, our socks have to match and, you know, this has the, the, the dishes can't be in the sink. And it's like, you know what, just relax. It's the holidays. The holidays are coming. We've got work. We've got family. We've got all kinds of things going on in our lives. And it's just okay to color outside the lines and just relax and just enjoy. So that is my gift for you. I'm sorry it's not, it doesn't come with a, a return slip, but um, it might feel good. I, the reason why I was thinking about that the other day too was that I, I looked down and I realized I had two different colored socks on and I, I never, I never do that. It's just, it's just a rule in my life that I'm like, no, your socks have to match. And we get so good at, at giving ourselves rules that we have to uh, um, live by and it's okay. I, I encourage you wear different socks, color outside the lines, but um, let's get in. So uh, Friday, we were looking at um, the very, very, what I was calling the idiot's guide to uh, Santa stockings. And today we're gonna take it up a notch. Um, I've got a little bit of uh, embroidery and we're gonna have some, some lining to the stocking and we're gonna have a little bit of padding. So I really, really think it's gonna be fun. So, uh, we're going to be continuing on and we're going to use our AccuQuilt Accu uh, Santa stocking and that's going to cut out uh, the pieces that we need um, for our stocking. So you've got, the, um, you've got the cuff and you've got the stocking itself and believe you me, after you've made one of these then you can start getting into an assembly line. So the first thing I want to do is open up my go cutter and we're going to just start getting into cutting. Um, today I have, let me actually first show you uh, the fabric that I have chosen for our stocking. I've got a tartan plaid and I'm, um, even this sometimes could be just a practice and maybe you can learn from my error. So I was press as I was um, putting some interfacing on the back of this. Now this um, this particular fabric is a shirting fabric, and it is um, a knit, and it's very very, and it's got a lot of body to it. So it's not really um, uh, structured, and so you definitely want to put some interfacing on it. 
the caution that I have for you would be when you're using um, maybe a knit that when you're applying your interfacing, check out what happens as you as you put you're putting it on, and maybe if you're putting the um, the interfacing on. Let me go to my down. When you're putting your interfacing on, you might try, if you're using a quilting cotton, it's perfectly fine to um, take your iron and press and you're lifting. Even so, I did this with the interfacing side up and you can see that my fabric was not perfectly straight. And so just by putting that interfacing, it introduced a wave into the into the fabric. Now it's just it wants to lay with a wave, and I was just not happy with that. So I learned from my own uh, trial and error, and I got a couple more cuts. So actually, I've cut enough for two boots, so I don't need those. I'm going to take two, but you'll notice that the second time when I when I did my interfacing. I actually, this time, I iron from the top, and now I've got those nice perpendicular lines, and it's not going to go all wavy. So that is now looking in good shape. So let's go ahead and cut these, and if you watched on Friday, you may have noticed <laughs> I cut two fronts, and that is easy, easy, easy to do. Um, we're not going to do that in the same mistake today. Um, we do want to have mirror images. And so when we're cutting, one is going to go face up with the fabric and one is going to go face down. And again, I'm working with a directional fabric. So the way I, I'm placing this on is that hopefully one of these lines will run kind of parallel to the to the back of the boot that it'll it'll just seem like oh yeah that's a natural line there um so yeah so what i can do is i can use my boot top as kind of like my 45 degree line and i'm going to line that up there and if you're really good you might even be able to um line these up like the way that you're cutting all of your lines no matter which way they actually um, follow the entire round of the boot i'm not going to do that that's too much work um, but if i'm looking at and i'm finding my 45 degree line i just want to make sure that it, i'm not like going this way when the boot's running this way so that looks pretty good and I'm going to do the second one. This time I'm going to do face up. That way I'm getting my mirrored images. And I will follow some of the pinstriping here. Can I get it? Can I get it? And this is, I like, this is not a have to. This is just where I like to be a little bit more fussy and have a little bit more finesse to my finish. So now that is there. And this time I'm not going to cut the cups because I've already done those and I can't wait to show you what I did on them. All right, so we're just cutting the boot itself. And I wind. There we go. And it looks like there was, I guess there was some confusion. There was there a, a bum link or something, guys? I'm sorry about that. All right, so we're gonna give it some love, get rid of the static, pull it away. And fingers crossed, I've got two beautiful boots. Oh, that one wanted a snag. And you will get that, it's just like a rotary cutter couple little snags, snag, snag, snag. Perfect. And then the heel of this boot wasn't so happy. Doo -doo -doo. Just want to make sure I'm 
even. And then I'm gonna actually have to take some scissors and do a little cut, cut. There we go. All right, so we've got our boots cut and we've got, we should wind up with mirrored images and I'll put this away. Ugh. All right, so let's show you on the camera here. We've got one and we've got two. We've got two mirrored. These are gonna be the outside of the boot. And you can see, this is what I was hoping for is that the line would run and this one did too. So the line's running um, parallel to the boot and I'm happy with that. That looks really good. All right, so let's do, uh, now that I'm seeing some people in the room, I guess there was some confusion on the link, uh, but let's do Rob's roll call. I love to see you guys. All right, so we've got Angel, Trace's in the house, Mr. Berg, we have Mr. McDonald, uh, we call her uh, Mrs. Kravitz. We have Susan. <laughs> we have the one and only Mr. Johan from Go Ahead and Make Me, Leslie, Rob, and Stuart over at the Wool Patch, Naughty Yarnies, hello Barb, and that's everybody. So welcome, happy Monday. All right, so we have, um, we have our two boots and then for this lined project, we're going to need two mirrored images, and I didn't do any directional, um, but we're going to have a two more boots that are going to be for the liner. So we're going to uh, have an inside and an outside, and seriously, I wasn't worried that these reds weren't 100%. Actually, they're, they're pretty off now that I look at it, um, but these are going to be way inside the boot. So even though they're not really, like this is a deep saturated red in the, um, in the tartan plaid. And then the lining, it's not as red, but I think it still looks great. Um, so you're gonna need two of each. And then you're gonna also need the cuff. And I chose a very, very pretty sparkly fabric. And it's gonna be a nice gray. And let me show you what that is gonna look like. So we have the boot, and then we have our cuff. And I told you, um, I told you guys that I, I wanted a fancy. So what I did is I embroidered Aaron's name, and I'm gonna get one too. <laughs> Where did mine go? <laughs> But first I, um, I made a little practice run and I was using a really, really small hoop and I didn't want to um, change my adjustments, but I, um, I knew that this was gonna be the right size. So I went and for the, this one, I went to a bigger hoop and then it all aligned, went to the center. So I'm really pleased, but I loved how this white is just really popping and I love the, the font. I think it looks great. And if you guys have the um, embroidery attachment on your um, on your machine, that's when you really can go to town. So one of the ones I was playing with this weekend is this little sheep. And I'm going to have to find the link for this because it's, it's just so, there's a couple of sheep um, and I forget the name of the website. And I, it's like one of the only ones that I ever visit. And I apologize that I don't know the name. I'll put it in the link. Um, in the comments below, but this like this sheep is so cute Like how adorable is that and if you could put that on your on your stand of stocking and the the quilting on this one is um, Was really really dense um, And I was like well, I don't because I'm dealing with this this kind of rayon fabric I didn't want it to be pinching or like gathering so I wasn't really quite ready to make the commitment, but you can imagine, like if you had, if you had this on here, it would just be, wouldn't that be darling? It would be really cute. All right, so what do you think? So, so far so good? 
So we're gonna need, um, with this cuff, um, we're actually gonna need four of the cuff pieces because we're gonna have um, a cuff for the inside and the outside, front and back. So that ends up being four. And we're gonna tackle that one first. And the way I'm approaching this is I'm gonna do a real easy sew, couple of seams. So we're gonna first put these together. So we're gonna sew those together and then we're gonna sew these together. And then it should work out. Now I did a little, um, I, I did a little test for myself and I just used a piece of paper and put my name and said, okay, how is this gonna finish out? And so like I'm pretending that this is, was my embroidery. So I know that this is gonna work. So the first thing that we'll do is let's go ahead and sew, sew these together. We can just do a quick chain piece on those. And we're gonna go fabric facing and let's see if we can get a little straighter there. All right, and let's see, what color thread am I working with? I'm working with black and I don't want that. So let me do a quick change. I know that we will go back to black, but not for now. Okay, and then what do I have in my bobbin? Just wanna make sure, yep, we got white. That went in a little too easy. There we go. All right, I think we are good to go. I don't need my mat. So we're gonna do a couple little seams. There's one. And two. All right, what I'm going to do with these since we've got to, we've actually got a quadrant that we're creating, a four by four, I'm gonna press these seams open and that way it's gonna reduce some of the bulk. Once we have those first seams um, open, then we can attach the, the bottom to the top. And then we'll have our cuff created. And I forgot one thing. So I was going to leave it for now. And that's looking good. Um, before I do that, I'm actually going to cut up quickly. I'm going to cut two... Um, two more pieces because I'm going to have some batting in between the layers. I want to make sure that this is really nice and, and fluffy. So we'll do that quick. We're going to use the cuff. Just make two quick squares or rectangles. All right, so there's one and I just need a mat. over. Give it some love. All right, so we've got two little pieces of batting. And now I think we're officially done with the cutter.
Okay, so I'm only going to be putting batting on um, the outer, on the outside. So if I take, if I take his outside, I'm going to consider that the outside. I really only need these to go together. So I can quickly put the, um, do I even need to do that? Yeah, I'll do it. I'm going to stitch these together. There we go. There we go. All right, so now I have attached those and we're gonna put those on the back. And then I'm going to attach front spacing, good side spacing. And we do have nested seam. Uh, we're gonna try to have nested seams here. So I'm going to give it a little pin. And that way, when we're looking at the, the finished um, cuff on from the outside, all the, all the seams are gonna line up. There we go. All right, and hopefully that'll end up looking real pretty. And this is your reminder that you wanna make sure that your machine's clean, that you don't have a lot of fluff building up because right now we're dealing with quilting cotton and it does shed the machine's not going to make another stocking for you by leaving all that fluff in there okay i just want to make sure that we're not moving so it's a little sticky some movement so I'm gonna go from the other side yeah I don't want to mess it up so I've got some um, excess star um, glue from when I was putting these together and so it's just it was sticking to the to the foot and it was causing me an issue, so I decided to flip it around. All right, we're coming up to that seam. Take my needle out, my pin out. And we're home stretch. There we go. All right, so now what we've wound up with is, and there's a little pin tuck there. I'll show you what I did. So when it was sticking, it caused a little pin tuck there, and I'm going to get rid of that because I don't like it. Where was my pincers? There we go. Have you opened? Again, this is where 
mom and pop quilt shop if you haven't watched and when she has to unpick she's got her song seam ripper seam ripper and tracy i think she has already put it to me that she doesn't need a seam ripper <laughs> do you tracy <laughs> and what am i missing in the room Trace, what is this? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so Susan says that the uh, sheep on a project, project bag would be darling. And then, uh, yes, we want project bags, please. <laughs> I don't do nothing free for no knitters. Yeah, when I I was looking into those, and I really did want to um, start making project bags for people, and it, at the end of the day, it's got to be, um, you know, when you're when you're selling things, you have to find the right uh, storefront to go to. You have to find the right uh, materials because I can't afford, you know, to to go retail prices on on nice fabric and like the, the inside, I mean, like there's a lot to it. And then to, of course, pay for my time to make the, to make the projects. I mean, you guys know, I mean, like when, even when you're making things for, for people, they don't, uh, people don't quite understand what it costs to make things. And so you're like, oh, I gave you all this love in this project. And they're like, oh, thanks. You know, you know, it, it's got to be worth your time. And then, um, I do love my I do love my knitters, but it's got to be uh, cost effective. All right, so let me show you um, what I did here. So basically, I've created with the uh, the four pieces that I've cut out. Again, depending on what pattern that you're working from, you might have just cut the whole thing out all at once. But I'm working with the die, and this is just a real easy way that I don't have to think about measurements. So I just saw, sew all four pieces, and we've got our um, outside, which has the uh, the batting, and then the inside that won't need it because it's just going to get flipped, and it'll look something like this. But really super cute already. And one thing that I would like to do is give this a little press, so that the um, so that this seam is going to work its way nicely. Um, and it will be finished now rather than when the entire um, stocking is made, then trying to stop top stitch. This is a good, a good time um, for me to do that now. So I'm actually only going to top stitch the outside, not the inside. So I just want to make sure that that's all laying right. And I'm going to go ahead and give that a quick press. And once you get into the zone, these will start coming along a lot faster. So I had a little bit more gummy on my on my fabric that was kind of holding me up, but really this shouldn't take too long at all, I promise. All right, so that's already looking pretty good. Let's give her a top stitch. And you know what, this would also be a great time if you want to do a decorative top stitch, um, try out some of your, your fancy pretty um, stitches, that would be a, a, um, a good time to do that. You can add whatever little motifs, maybe you have some, um, some snowflakes or something. I'm just gonna, for, this, uh, for the sake of these, and making it go a little quicker, I'm just doing a little bit of um, straight stitch, top stitching. All right, so now I know that my um, my batting is going to lay correctly, and even with the white, I mean, you could do you could do some um, color matching with your thread to that fabric. I was just doing white and it barely sticks out because the fabric does have that sheen to it. So for now, this piece is ready, and now I wanna go to 
the stocking. Now we're going to treat the stocking, and, I'm sorry, the lining and the outer boot exactly the same. We're going to do um, from the front of the boot, we're just going to sew down to where the curve starts and we're just going to attach those two pieces. I'm going to use white because it'll be all inside. It won't, uh, that thread color won't pop through. Uh, where's my little starter? I always do better when I have a starter. Okay, so we're going from the front of the boot and we're gonna just sew just to where the curve starts. And that's about there. And I'm even going to give it a little back tack. All right, so we lay those and that is good. So we've got these two pieces put together and I know it looks weird. It looks like it's going to be some, some shorts. I actually probably could be a pair of shorts, the beginnings of a pair of shorts for a little kid. Um, but yeah, that's all we need to do with that one. We're going to do the same thing with the, um, the dress fabric. And if you want to pin, you can, um, considering how slippy this fabric is, I'm going to go ahead and pin. Kind of gives me a lifeline. And if you see here, like on the, on the pin, maybe I can go down. Um, you can see that we're only sewing that much and then we'll set that aside. So let me go ahead and sew those for you. And I'm gonna use my starter fabric. So that's two pieces started. And believe it or not, this is where it's really going to get quick. So now that we have the outside, the inside, now we're going to take the, um, we're going to take the good fabric and then actually I'm going to lay that there. And then, did I cut my boot? Did I cut a boot? I may have to cut some boot batting. I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. All right, so I'm going to cut some boot batting. I thought we were done with the cutter. I swore I did. This is turning into a cut as you go. <laughs> All right, so I have two pieces ready. Actually, I have four. I don't need four. And voila. All right, what am I? What's going on in the room? Are you guys working today and taking a taking a late lunch, or are you um, are you crafting?
Okay. Let me see what I'm, what's going on in the room? So, yeah, so that's one thing. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I had the D foot on, so I could have, when, it, when it's getting a little sticky, and if I wasn't using that starter to actually pull, yeah, I didn't use the, 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 the dual feed. Good tip. All right, and <laughs> Susan, are you, am I on the naughty list? Am I getting coal now or onions? I'm going to regret what comment. Yeah, <clears throat> and so, yeah, Barb, like when you're talking about all these handmade projects and how much things actually cost, uh, Barb said, someone asked me to knit them a fingering weight sweater in hand dyed yarn. Um, no, they thought it was going to be like $50. Yeah, uh, yeah, that doesn't work that way. <clears throat> and yeah, non-crafters have no idea, Barb, of the time and the cost. Uh, uh, so I guess uh, out of these, Yoan wants some Daisy Duke uh, Santa shorts. So that would be that would be interesting. <laughs> if you wear them and put them on your Instagram, maybe. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, and so exactly, 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 uh, Tracy. So I tell people they can have a quilt if I love them. If they don't get one, <laughs> then they know what they, I think of them. <laughs> that is the truth. You guys, I mean, there's, there's the quilt worthy and there's the non quilt worthy people. So it is what it is. Okay, so now we're going to take our um, outer boot, and you notice that I'm putting one, one side off, and then I'm going to have the good side. So I'm sorry, I'm going to have one side that's actually getting the lining. And then I'm going to flip this over. And then I'm going to put the lining itself. Actually, no, I'm going to put the cuff. So if I have to think about this, so if this is going to be, um, I may have to change my plan. So if, if the, this is going to wind up here, then I want to make sure that this is folded this way. And then we're going to take the batting and make sure that that is going to be on that same side. So now we're going to do a straight stitch. And I'm just sanity check. Yep, we're going to be good. So that's going to wind up looking like that. So I can take that. And once I get this attached, then I'm going to do uh, a basting stitch. Actually, why don't I do that first, just to make sure that it's going to lay right. I'm going to do a basting stitch. I heard you, Brendan. I don't need to see that. I really need to see this.
Yeah, I'll thank myself later that I have basted this down. The batting and the boot. So that way it doesn't uh, drift when I'm attaching all the pieces. All right, now I can do the same thing with the other side. So there's gonna be batting on the entire outside of the boot. I'm gonna start from, Lord help me, I'm gonna start from that little, I guess it is like a little crotch. So I'm gonna start from that crotch area and just base that down quickly. All right, is anybody watching any Lifetime movies yet, or the holidays where somebody's gone back home to save the farm they've lost their job they've lost a, a partner or something and they find the real meaning of christmas <laughs> all right now that i've got those basted together we're going to attach the top of this and I do have my seams there so I'm going to try to line them up ooh 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 ooh, ooh I forgot it's cheerio time we've got to make our um, our little hanger so this morning I was looking for one of my little tools and it lives in a Cheerios container. So I'm going to make, um, I have my little Cheerios. This is supposed to be for lunch, but I use it for sewing and you need your little ribbon uh, maker. I use these probably, and they come in uh, four different sizes. If you guys have these, um, I use them like maybe four times a year, but I'm so glad when I do. So I want to use my leftover binding strips that I have. And I thought I already had some pre-cut and then I find the one that generally fits. This is the 12 millimeter, and I think that one's gonna work really good. So what that does, if you're not familiar, you just feed your um, little strips in, and then I like to even give it a little spray starch because I want it to stay, and it's easier when it's um, a little wet. So I'm going to spray starch that real quick. And then what I do is I feed it into the wider end. And as I pull on the tape, when I, as I advance it, then it'll, it'll automatically just fold and I iron it in place and voila, I've got a hanging hook started. Uh, let me cut off to 8 inches, 12 inches. And then I use a little dowel, I'm sorry, a little owl awl to help feed it through. So I've got my little ribbon maker. And then you have to coax it in sometimes. It's a little fussy. 
and then if I got it, it'll catch. Come on. <laughs> I'm seriously laughing because every time I do this, it's always like a no brainer. But as soon as you go to do it in front of people, it doesn't want to work. And then I look like I'm built wrong. Okay. I swear these are the best tools. There we go. Maybe I needed to do it with my right hand. All right, so I've got it feeding through and then I just feed that. Uh, let me show you. So I just feed that through until it catches in there and it's, it'll fold. And then at the end, and then as I'm, as I'm ironing, it'll just, it'll just keep, it'll just keep shape. So it looks good. So you just pull it through. I'm going to put it back in iron. And then once I have this tape made, then I'm just going to give it the top stitch. Done. And I was, as I was looking through my, um, through my stash and I actually have some, um, some heavy weight, heavyweight cording. You can use cording if you don't want to use fabric for your little pool. And just for ease, I'm going to use white thread instead of taking the time to change to black thread for this one little thing. And then let me use my little thing here. And then I'm going to go back to, we don't, we don't want a basting stitch anymore. This really does make a teeny, 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 tiny. Um, you could use like a two and a half inch strip of um, fabric first to make your pull tie. I'm sorry, your, your hook. Um, I went really small. So I think mine was like only a, an inch and a half to begin with. And so mine is super, super tiny. All right, so I've got my little hang tag and we had to make that first. And we're gonna come back to the, we're gonna come back here. And this time now I'm, I'm gonna insert my little, um, my little tag inside with the, with the raw edge to the outside. And I think I would rather have it, so his name is right here. So I'm gonna have it on the opposite side, kind of like the back side. So I'll put that there. And I'm gonna pin that in place. And now we can do that, that seam. And where's my little starter?
Okay, and I want to make sure that I'm grabbing. I, I think I'm not grabbing. So I want to make sure I'm grabbing the all the layers. So I am. So I'm good to go. I've got two pins here, so I'm going to release those. Okay, I'm stopping in the middle, adjusting where I need to, making sure all of my layers are lining up. All right, so we had two layers there. And I'm actually going to start from the outside again just because I have, I didn't base down the very center. And I wanna make sure that I'm catching all of the ends. There we go. Voila. All right, so now that is looking the way it's supposed to. So now we have the, the boot starting to form. We have the, uh, the cuff that's starting to form. And now we're going to take the, um, the other side of the boot, the lining, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're, we're gonna have that, um, that seam on the outside, we're gonna have the non-seam side facing in. And we're gonna put that to the other edge of the, um, at the top. So we'll make sure that we're all nice and clean. And then believe it or not, we're almost there. It's funny, like there's a little, there's these little finesse things that you have to do along the way, but then when you come to the last part, it's really gonna go quick. And then I, I wanna make sure that I'm matching up my, my seams. other side and if all goes right in the world all right so if you've done everything then it start should start looking like this and you've got three pieces you've got the lining You've got the cuff, and then you've got the um, you've got your outer boot fabric. And if you look at it from the back, then you're going to notice that all of the batting. Uh, let's show it here. All of the batting is going to be on the outer good part of your of your fabric. So it's just on the outer side. You don't need to have any additional uh, batting on the inside. You could do that, but it's I think it would be a little bit too much. All right, let me see what I'm missing in the room. I'm doing all the work and you guys are uh, pointing out my, <laughs> my mistakes. Um, so Barb says she is a Christmas nutty here. It, uh, she started a couple of weeks ago. She hates to admit. So uh, I'm actually, I think getting into the, um, into the, into the season and Angel, is a Hallmark movie uh, addict. I love that. I was probably, I, I was probably like 10 minutes, this was like 10 minutes ago. Um, 
All right, and then one thing, you, Rob says he, uh, or Tracy says, I stick a pin in the slot chip to catch the binding. I have to think about that. So I stick a pin in the slot to catch the bind. Oh, in the, in the little ribbon. Yeah. I was trying to do that with my all, but you know, sometimes it just doesn't work. And no, Rob, uh, it's actually a, a Jack Daniels spray bottle, but it's just water. It says that, it just says, just water. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, so yeah, this is hardcore, hardcore sewing, Rob. <laughs> Leslie says that. All right, so, all right, so now I have the, the pieces here, and all I have to do is flip them over, and now we're going to take, we're going to start, remember when we had that first seam that we just put those pieces together, and that was just to secure that in place, and to start mirroring up those, um, uh, those parts so that it's not going to get all wonky as you're putting all these layers together. So you just had that first start, that first stitch, and that's where we're going to start. But we're going to go all the way around the entire boot. And the best way to attack that would be start with the finished, so like your outer side with the, um, with the batting. Start with that first, because when we get to all the way around, when we get to just about here in the um, in the inner lining, we're going to leave a little hole for us to turn the whole project out. Um, so yeah, so we're going to stop really mid, just about at the toe of the boot when we get to the lining. So if you're more comfy doing so, um, go ahead and pin all this together. I don't think that's such a bad idea. Um, because you really do want to make sure that all your edges are going to marry nicely. And let's see, so where did I start sewing? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go there. And I'm not going to do a lot of pinning. I'm just going to every now and again, maybe every five inches, every six inches, somewhere in there. Now, I have w at least one friend in here who's now just working on his Halloween quilt. I'm not going to name any names, Rob. I would have left it till next year, but, you know, I have, I have the, my Halloween makings, and I didn't get started on it, and I was like, I got the holidays. I can't, I can't do it. So I, I've already got my... When it comes to Halloween time next year, I'm already going to be good to go. But that's commitment. And Rob, is uh, um, you're pretty fast when it comes to put your, your projects together. So maybe you'll have your Halloween quilt finished and your Christmas one done even before I start my Christmas All right, now I have um, here, we do have a seam, so I want to make sure that I'm catching that. And then once we get there, once we get to the, the boot lining, there's less layers, and so I can do that um, just with my hands. I just wanted to pin all of my thick layers together to make sure that it was all going to go smoothly. All right, so I actually don't need my 
little jump starter since I'm already in mid stitch. And I like to take my time around the curves. I'm not going to get any awards for going fast. Oops, sorry. I don't know about you guys, but I always, always, always stick myself with pins more times than I care to admit. And I think that's why I don't like using them. Okay, we're coming up to that seam. And it's a little bulky, so I'm going to raise my foot just to make sure I'm not pushing. Another seam. All right, now we're coming up to the lining. It's very exciting. And let's make sure. And remember, I'm only going to sew to the toe and give myself enough um, room that I can turn the whole project inside out or outside in. back tack this all right so I've only left myself like a little little two inch um, turning and that should be enough actually I'm gonna pop open because it seems a little tight so I would say do what's comfortable for you um, but two to four inches should be enough there we go and that way I can easily turn it with my hands and then if you have um, I've seen um, people that use there's all kinds of hacks and tricks to turn things inside out um, I tend not to use any of the the gadgets but um, people could use, you could use hemostats, so like just reach in there and pull. People use a stick. Oh, we got some silver coming. All right, we are getting to the finish line. We're going to need to do a little pressing just to make sure it's all party all right so the stocking has been released and now give some love 
And what I like is that it's, it's, it feels really, really, um, this is really soft fabric. Um, I just got it at a big box store. It wasn't fancy, just pulled from my stash. But you'll see that you're getting one long tube. And this is where I use my little, I don't even know what this is called. It's a turner, like you can push the, the ends out. And I'm just trying to go into the seam and I'm not pushing really, really hard because these, even though they're, you know, pretty, um, they're not sharp, 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 these still go, if you're, if you're too rough with them, they will go right through your fabric. All right, so I'm gonna push, push, push. Make sure that my, the toe of the boot is out. I'm really having to dig. All right, I can't reach that far, so I'm gonna pull with my hands and then just kind of knead it. And I see my basing stitch um, is still there, so I'm gonna pull that out. But really, I'm just going along the, um, the seam around the entire perimeter of the boot and ensuring that I'm getting everything to go to the outside And then once you've got everything pretty well set, gang, I am so excited. Our little tag is there and it's in the place where I wanted it. Look at that. We got a cute boot and it's coming out. It's coming along. So I'm gonna give this a quick press and then we're going to um, we're just gonna, uh, you could whip stitch this where you had that hole, or you know me, I'm just gonna take it back to the sewing machine because it'll be so far down, it's down at the toe, nobody's ever gonna see it. If you're wanting to go ahead and stitch it, whip stitch it, I say do it. Do what makes you happy. And then, as I was saying earlier, what's nice is that, I mean, you could even use muslin for your, your lining, um, whatever, whatever. It really doesn't matter because with this pattern, and I'll put, the, I'll put a link to the pattern in the show notes as well. Um, whatever, um, whatever way you do it, I'm sorry, whatever um, lining fabric, it really doesn't matter because it'll be pretty well into the stocking and you'll never see it. Too, too cute. Look at that. I know it's exactly who's gonna go inside here. It's gonna get some, um, lifesavers, he'll get some q-tips, we always put q-tips in our stockings, razors, all the practical stuff. All right, so I've got this all ironed and now I can just take the inside, the lining, and push it inside and then we're almost done. Oh no, I have to finish that little seam, don't I? So I'm just gonna hand turn that with my fingers and then press it again. And nobody will see it.
Now, if I was not doing this in front of everybody, I would have I would have gone ahead and changed my thread color, but I'm just trying to make this. It'll never get torn inside out again. And then one thing that I um, will show you, I mean, like just taking the time to do all of your little um, your little seams and making sure that your um, they match, it really will show off. There's a pin in there. There's a pin in there. <laughs> How did I miss that? Where is it? There's this, There's your little surprise, uh, uh, Aaron. <laughs> Go in and get your gift. There's a pin in there. Am I red? <laughs> I was like, what is that? There was, there was something sharp in there. I'll get it out later. That is hilarious. <laughs> Oh, I've got to be careful. Don't do that. I sewed a pin in there. That is hilarious. All right, so then... You've got your finished little stocking. How adorable and cute is that? It's a little high, and again, I was playing with the embroidery file. I wasn't quite sure. Actually, no, it's not. The top edge was down. There we go. Now it's not so high. There we go. It is fully lined. It's got some batting in there. That is a super, super cute holiday stocking. Love it. All right. Wait for pictures on Instagram. <laughs> uh, so, so you guys are talking about Wonder Clips, and I actually do have them, and I run back and forth with them. Like, I've only had them for a little while, and I forget that I have them. So when I, when I, uh, when I remember, I actually can use those too. Uh, Leslie says, uh, it needs some skeins of yarn. Yes, for Aaron, it needs, it needs some, um, it needs some yarn. That is so, we'll go and put that on his, um, on the fireplace. Love it. Yes, and then Susan says, don't forget the Werther's. Yes, he needs Werther's and, um, I just said it, lifesavers. All right, so, <laughs> Stuart says, I want, uh, uh, I'm a Wonder Clip fan rather than a pin, and then it, de it depends on what you like in principle. So the good thing is, I guess if you leave a Wonder Pin inside the project, mm, who's gonna get hurt? But if you leave a pin, yeah, that's not going to be good. I can't believe I did that. All right, gang, thank you so much. I hope you got some, um, some new way to do a stocking out of this, that you had some fun. As always, it's really nice seeing you. And I think I do have another holiday project in store for you on Friday. So that's it for now. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Have a great week ahead. And I will see you soon.